it's another Monday here with us, of course, June 25th, 2018, the year of our Lord. We are grateful that you're allowing us to come into your homes to your beautiful morning show, New Day, which, of course, is the best morning show in Ghana. Bright, good morning. Well, How are you? Good morning. Uh, another Monday is here, and so certainly that's uh, excited mm -hmm. because uh, after resting for the weekend, back to business right. uh, from now to Friday, mm. uh, you got to put in your best to be part of society, you got to put in your best uh, to fulfill what your responsibilities are good morning once again from now till 9 a.m the team is ready but i'm sure but now you have noticed that uh, <laughs> one of us is absent he's embarking on a lifelong journey starting from today i'm sure when we get to the end of the journey we'll tell you exactly where johnny is going to <laughs> but good morning once again to ghana africa and the rest of the world mm. uh, it was a fantastic weekend for me i did a lot of rest uh, hoping to uh, build up a lot of energy for the week. Mm. I don't know. Amma doesn't look too uh, healthy. I'm sure for the week. I, I mean, I rested well over the weekend, but yesterday just had a way of its own of, of uh, sleeping. Okay, I mean, okay. I went to work all right, did a few rounds, but I came home to a good rest. But Saturday into Monday, I don't know what, Sunday, sorry, into Monday, I just couldn't sleep. I guess it was the whole <laughs> idea of starting oh, a new thing having rest, to go uh, to work. Going to and so it makes me feel like I'm not ready for the week, but okay. I'm sure I'll get in the pace okay. slow. Oh, I don't worry. I'll, I'll lay hands in the course of the program and then you'll be fine. Right, so you know I don't trust your hands. Let oh. alone. But yeah, oh. I'm sure. But I, I, you know, um, you know, laying of hands is part of the, uh, you know, the, the spirituality that we have, and it works. It works magic. Right. All right. So uh, you you got to stay with us throughout uh, the uh, day, and a lot on the newspapers this oh. morning. We'll be telling you exactly what is in them. Uh, there is uh, so much about the Ghana car. There is so much about uh, one village, one dam. There is so much about what the president said about the Ghana car. We'll tell you all that. And then uh, we'll also let you into what's happening in Russia. I was excited <laughs> because uh, my favorite team that I have predicted to win the tournament, Germany, produced oh. another magic over the weekend. I watched that match and uh, just before the goal was scored, mm. all my veins were opened, my <laughs> blood was just gushing out and then the goal came and they returned back to their bases. A wonderful performance from Japan. We'll tell you about what's coming from But I thought from you were going to talk about Senegal and Japan yesterday. Well, I, 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 I tell you, I, I, Senegal I, started no, off well I, and I was very disappointed no, in allowing I'm telling Japan you, to I, draw. I don't have, uh, I I, I don't have uh, uh, huge expectations in the Senegalese team. I watched their first match against mm. um, that they, they won 2-0. Uh, yeah. And I, I told myself that this could have been luck. Right. They were just lucky to have scored to go. Look, yeah. the Black Stars, I mean, the jaded Black Stars that we know, managed to beat the Japanese by two nails. Yeah. So, in Senegal, yeah. uh, where they are and what we see them mm. to be, could only manage a draw against right. that kind of uh, Japanese team. Then don't I don't know what will happen in the other stage. But, yeah, but uh, they are from this Africa. This is just so an African we'll thing support. where, as usual, when we're the first to score, we seem to take you know a back seat and relax, and then we get people uh, taking over. Honestly, I think the, 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 Sen the Senegalese team isn't that strong. Right. I think that because Nigeria didn't do well mm. on their first match, right. Egypt same, right. uh, Morocco, Morocco, Tunisia had done same. Mm. Uh, it looks like then the only team we needed to support was Senegal. Right. And so, you know the African, a lot of uh, spirits, I'm sure, moved to Russia to be with them, and they managed uh, a win in the first match. And after that, uh, they're struggling. Mm. But uh, let's hope and see, but I am not expecting too much from them. Right. I am sure uh, it will not take long for them to uh, come under strong opposition. Mm. And, uh, but, hey, that's, uh, that's a that bit. But I'm saying, I, I am, I am mm. thinking that we should even begin to look at the way some of these, these teams have qualified right. to the World mm -hmm. Cup. I don't think that by now Africa should go to a World Cup and right from the beginning of the tournament, teams, African teams are already oh. going home. Mm. I mean, it's, it's, it's yeah. not the best. Mm -hmm. we, we have the best of footballers around the globe. Mm -hmm. I mean, if you like, take a look at our stars who are playing in professional leagues. And yet, we don't seem to be uh, making headway when it comes to international tournaments. Right. I think that yeah. we should take a look at how yeah. these teams qualify, particularly our uh, uh, qualifying series, the yeah. way they are played, played. a bit problematic for I me. agree. Right. 
But interestingly, you know how social media has a way of carrying pictures across and videos. I saw a lot of Nigerian things and it was interesting. I mean, the way all Nigerians have come together rallying behind and on TV screens, you see people laying hands on the players and praying for them and chanting and all manner of things. And that was very interesting because I thought, really, is it at this point that you expect God at touching them will do anything? It's the fact that they had to play. They had to be, you know, in high spirits. But Kano was there when they were going to play that particular match. Right. And I, I guess that whole, you know, spirit team spirit of having people who have left the team coming to support you and giving you that confidence that well you can do it at least maybe boost their confidence and to be you know able to get how far they've gotten and i'm looking for that more also with the Ghanaian teams where along the line we've had you know defections because let's say a particular um captain or whatever um coach doesn't choose certain players we've had these back and forth but i'm looking forward to even when we don't go to world cup amongst ourselves reuniting and having that team spirit when it comes to football because overall i mean let's take away the gfa issues and the sagas that have gone on but looking at what really goes down within the team whether money's exchange hands or not is, do we have that unifying spirit irrespective oh. of whether you're local or you're an international player such that whether asamajan is there whether muntari plays whether asian i mean when they all the team the team, remains yes, does the team remain one and are they yeah. high in high spirits to make sure that they'll always put Ghana out there? We'll have look, I, World Cup, I expect Ghana to make it. Well, 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 let's see what happens. Mm. I, I guess we'll have a long, a long time to see the Black Stars uh, really united as we saw them before uh, South Africa 2010. Mm. Uh, but let's pray for them. It is well, it is not beyond being done. Yeah. All right. So, a lot on the table this morning. The president has been talking about the Ghana card, as yeah. I told you. Uh, he, he, he thinks that the minority is taking a um, uh, uh, stance that he thinks is not uh, too good. Well, I, I am saying that, look, you see, the, uh, if you're a father mm. and your, your children uh, are complaining about mm. an issue whether at home or out of home, well, it is your job mm. to have to, to deal with it. it. So if the minority is complaining about a law that has, they think, uh, is trying to uh, sideline some Ghanaians mm. in terms of the national ID, well, I'm thinking that the president will say that, okay, uh, I've heard what the minority is saying. Uh, we're taking a look at it. We weigh the scale. If we find out that what you are saying makes sense, why not? If not, we'll go ahead. But uh, the president seemed to uh, go back to the argument that everyone has made. He's raising the argument that um, it is a law that has been passed in Parliament. Mm. The minority took part in passing mm. the law. So why are they complaining? Um, I am a bit not very comfortable. Again, uh, he raises issues about uh, the Supreme Court uh, vote ID card. I mean, these are issues that people have spoken about. So I thought that the president would, would have come out to say that, okay, we have gotten to this point. We have listened to the minority. We're taking a decision. And then when we are ready, uh, okay. we will uh, come out publicly. But looks like the president is also saying the same thing as every Ghanaian is. Oh, we'll come is, back to discuss arguing. that more anyway. But Andrew right. is joining us. You have a good weekend. Oh, I did. I did. Mm. Great. Okay, okay. Andrew always, uh, I mean, he's always, uh, <laughs> he's a young man, so has a lot of... Uh, <laughs> Anyway. Uh, time during weekends. I yeah. Know. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> but AJ, you got the news for us? Yes, I, I What's have. What's coming I up have. in the news, though? Uh, the news coming up shortly <laughs> after this. <laughs> All right, now, so let's look at the headlines for this morning. Now, President Ekufuado has placed a temporary ban on foreign travels by ministers, deputy ministers, MMDCEs, and heads of government agencies. Now, Fuvema in the Keta municipality of Volta region on the brink of extinction following rampaging tidal waves. Director General of Ghana Health Service directs public sector medical practitioners also engaged in private practice to resign.
Hello and good morning once again. Now, medical superintendent of Nanahima Dechi Government Hospital at Discover in the Western Region, Dr. Osei Joseph, has expressed concern over inadequate accommodation for most of the staff of the hospital. The situation, he noted, has resulted in most staff applying for transfer. He made the observation when the Council of the Ghana Medical Association visited the facility. The hospital, built in 1974 by the late Paramount Chief of Upper Discoof Traditional Area, Nanahima Dechi the 13th, was handed over to the Health Ministry in 1985. The 60-bed facility has a daily OPD attendance of 69 and average surgeries of 24 in a month. The hospital, which records an average of 80 deliveries a month, is confronted with a lot of challenges, including inadequate accommodation to attract and retain critical staff. Out of the over 120 staff, only 39 have accommodation at the facility. Some pair with colleagues. Majority of them commute from Takradi and Agunan Kwanta about an hour drive to work daily. As a result, most of them have applied to be transferred. Medical Superintendent Dr. Joseph Osei says the situation affects effective health care delivery. When the hospital was built, uh, this thing was not taken into consideration. So as the hospital has grown, it has become uh, a problem. Every nurse working for about three four years has a right to decide that I want to be transferred out. And most of them has to be transferred out. Chairman of the Council of the Ghana Medical Association, Dr. Yao Yabua, admitted if young Kwanta Regional Hospital needs more assistance. Uh, the infrastructure in terms of burdens uh, is a huge uh, challenge. The burdens have been there for so many years. Uh, maintenance of the burdens have been so bad. We've talked to the management and the regional director and his team have set up a committee to look into all these issues. Still on health, the Director General of the Ghana Health Service, Dr. Anthony Insiansari, has directed active medical practitioners in the public sector, but also engaged in the private practice to resign arresting staff of Efiankwanta Regional Hospital in Takwadi. He condemned the act, which he says results in conflict of interest and undermines effective health care delivery. This visit formed part of his three-day Western Regional Tour. Dr. Anthony Siasari reminded health practitioners of their duty to give of their best and condemned the practice of referring patients to their private facilities, depriving public health facilities of revenue. We are not saying nobody should do any private practice or anything or so, but if once you're on duty, you're on duty. If you are not on duty, then you are private time, yes. Because we realize that their patient load is very low compared to Kosimintin. He directed all heads of departments to pay attention to their staff attendance to ensure the situation is addressed. On the challenges confronting health care delivery at the Ifian Kwanta Regional Hospital, the Director General said a committee has been set up to come up with recommendations. Chairman of the Council of Ghana Health Service, Dr. Yao Yabua, said the council has officially written to all hospitals to ensure doctors who refer patients to their private clinics and hospitals be made to resign. We are not going to tolerate a situation where a doctor or a nurse or any health professional should have conflict of interest by way of uh, leaving the core work for which the person is paid and go and work in a private practice uh, at the detriment of the, the health of uh, the people. On the new bed syndrome, Dr. Yabua said the council has taken note of the lapses and is addressing the issue. We've talked to our staff in all the government hospitals that if it will mean treating the patient on the stretcher in the ambulance, that should be done. And I'm happy to know that uh, the information that has gone out of the Governing Council of Ghana Health Service has trickled down to even private hospitals. President Kufuado has directed that all foreign travels by ministers, deputy ministers, MMDCEs and heads of government agencies be temporarily suspended with immediate effect. The Minister for Foreign Affairs and Regional Integration is, however, exempted from the temporary ban. A statement signed by the Chief of Staff at the Flagstaff House indicated that guidelines in respect of future foreign travels aimed at minimizing disruption of government domestic work will be communicated later.
We apologize for lack of sound on that story. Now, the Wutibeke DA Basic School in the Pru East District of the Bonohafo region is bedeviled with several challenges. The school also lacks furniture, textbooks, and teaching aids. Peter Kwao Adato reports teachers rely on pamphlets for lessons. Wutideke is a farming and fishing settler community of about 2,000 inhabitants with a large children population. This compelled the community to establish a basic school in 1984 to meet the educational needs of their wards, who hitherto had to trek 8 kilometers to Yeji or other communities. But the Wutideke DA basic schools is bedeviled with a myriad of challenges. Even though government absorbed the school in 1994, no infrastructural and logistical needs are provided. The only positive contribution has been the posting of teachers and enrolling it onto the school feeding program. This three-unit primary block was provided by a benevolent non-governmental organization. The lack of classrooms compelled the teachers to convert the staff common room into class three to allow the kindergarten to occupy primary one. We are not supposed to combine the KG1 and 2, but because the human resource, uh, we are shortage of that, uh, we've compelled to combine the KG1 and 2. Most of the classrooms lack furniture. The combined kindergarten 1 and 2 classes, with a total enrollment of 92 pupils, is also without furniture. Another challenge to effective teaching is lack of teaching and learning aids. Teachers, we were told, rely on pamphlets and old lesson notes. So when maybe some small capitation comes, then we have to go to town and get some one copy, one copy, so that the teachers will be using. Under normal circumstances, we should have textbooks so that when, in case we are doing reading, every child will get his or her own textbook so that you can uh, manage them how they are following the reading. But because we don't have textbooks, it's only the teacher who will be using the one that maybe we had from the market, then uh, the children will be following like that. The National Youth Coordinator at the Ghana National Association of Teachers, NAT, Thomas Musa, is worried. If we do not help the children today, let none of us think that we are safe. You can acquire the property, but if the child has no education, at 25, the child cannot read and write. It means that when it comes to, I mean, the issues of, uh, I call it skills and competencies, the child is out. He called on the district education directorate to support the teachers to deliver. Now let's head over to Fuvema in the Keta municipality of the Volta region where more than 500 houses have been destroyed by tide tidal ways. Residents who expect an intervention other than relocation fear the remaining houses cannot withstand devastation. Stanley Blue has the rest of the story. Fuveme is a coastal settlement in the Keta municipality. The community which has had its population dwindled to about 200 shares a common boundary with Atiteti, another coastal community to the east is currently surrounded by the sea and the Volta River. Early settlers were mainly farmers due to the vast fertile land. But the situation has changed following the rampant tidal waves, leaving only a narrow strip of land which serves as habitat for residents. Fishing has now become their source of livelihood. Tidal waves, an annual phenomenon, have wreaked havoc in the community. The bare land behind me used to be a boat for more than 500 residents of this community but they have had to relocate due to constant destruction of their homes by tidal waves to my left is the sea and to my right is the Volta lake the community gets flooded with the least downpour construction of a sea defense to save this community from the tidal waves ended at Akurahutoko more than 10 kilometers from Fuveme more houses continue to wash away. The Fuveme MA Basic School was among several structures washed away by the sea until the Keta Municipal Assembly put up another classroom block to replace the old one. But residents fear it would suffer the same fate. 54 year old Emmanuel Azidoku has lived in Fuveme for over 40 years. 
he is disappointed their concerns have not been addressed. They have given us some place to go. But when you go there, the landowners are demanding money from you, which we cannot get to pay them. Already we are stranded. So if we cannot get money to pay them, then we want to live here. The news team was told the municipal assembly last year devised a relocation plan, which is yet to be implemented. But residents are not excited about the intervention. They just say it, but they are not doing anything uh, for this uh, relocation for us. Because we don't know, so far as they say, they will come and see the place where to relocate us. We are waiting for them to come and do something for us, but they are not coming to do anything. The assemblyman for the area, Oswald Eche Pojo, fears the entire township could soon be wiped off from the face of the earth. We are seeing a very serious danger because uh, now uh, the way the whole area is, you can see the, uh, the tidal waves all around, meaning that the, the place is shallow. So if it's shallow like this and then the sea level increases, it really, it will, it will flood the whole, it will submerge the whole area. This calls for extension of the sea defense from Akbrahutoko to this area. Stanley Niblewu, TV3 News, Fuveme, Keta. Now let's do some politics. The opposition National Democratic Congress, NDC, has held its nationwide constituency polls to elect executives to manage the affairs of the party ahead of the 2020 general elections. The election process was largely successful, except in some constituencies which witnessed some incidents, some of which led to the abrupt end of proceedings. Disorderly registers for the conduct of polls led to delays and agitations by aggrieved persons in some constituencies. There were incidents of intense arguments, charged comments, and intimidation leading to suspension. The slow pace also got delegates impatient with the situation worsening by the absence of some potential voters on the electoral register. The delays resulted in some voters abandoning the exercise, citing tightness, hunger, and thirst. Resolving accreditation challenges among delegates was another critical issue. The elections had to be put on hold to sort out what party officials always termed internal matters. Confusion rocked some constituencies, forcing the electoral commission officers to back out of the process. Polls started at late in most constituencies instead of the advertised 9 a.m. with voting going on till late in the night in some constituencies. Now let's do some international news where President Trump says illegal immigrants should be deported with no judges or court cases. President Donald Trump said on Sunday that people who enter the United States illegally should be sent back immediately to where they came from without any judicial process, likening them to invaders who are trying to break into the country. His proposal drew immediate criticism from legal analysts and immigrant rights advocates who said it would violate the U.S.'s constitution due process provision which applies to citizens and non-citizens alike. In a series of tweets on Sunday, Trump said, we cannot allow all these people to invade our country. When somebody comes in, we must immediately, with no judges, or court cases bring them back from where they came. And that's it for the news for this morning. You do return shortly after the break. Welcome back. So it's time for newspaper headlines. We'll start off with Ghanaian Times. It says, government has no interest in the Ghana card. That's coming from the president. Then also, government appointees have been banned from foreign travels. Then on page 26, it says, single window saves government 
200 million dollars annually that's coming from the university of ghana business school report also one village one down kick starts in bongo those are the stories carried by ghanaian times and we will be interrogating further into that as we come to the newspaper reviews bnft also says beige to meet 400 million ghana city capital requirement then again the single window saves government 200 million dollars annually and then the tie and dye industry says fake cheap imports silently we'll go into that further when we sit down to discuss the papers this morning moving on to other newspaper headlines we have daily graphic it says the president slams minority for its stance on the national id and then of course nla also takes over the vag lottery that's a story on page 75 then again the single window saves ghana 500 million dollars in two years then 46 companies and individuals have been honored and mcdan shipping company won three awards out of those awards that we're giving on that particular day then moving on to other newspapers that are in this morning daily guide also says ministers and dces have been banned from foreign trips then nana blasts ndc of a ghana card boycott and it says ghana water md no merit in allegations against the board chair then also three mpp northern regional chairman okay freddie blair and that's freddie big campaigning in the upper east region then maybe a final newspaper that has come in the finder says president slams ndc for deliberately sabotaging the ghana card then gwcl increases revenue collection by 14.6 percent in three months indeed if that story is true then ghanaians will be happy but what is the cost of government officials travels that's a question in the newspaper then gwcl md rejects calls from staff to remove the board chairman and then finally government also bans cough syrups import i mean the ones that contain codeine that come into the country then and finally, the Herald says, Dr. and brother have been jailed 15 years for defrauding NHIS. Also, Ghana ports and harbors left massively divided. Workers forced to apologize to Peter McManu or the risk dismissal. Well, there are some allegations against him saying he was engaging in family and friends there. Also, a coup father threatens NDC with state security and slams minority MPs with a Ghana card boycott. And then Flagstaff House cards guards have been arrested for alleged armed robbery. We'll go into those stories as we interrogate. I see. The papers. Question. But yeah, I, yeah. I want to touch back on the national ID issue that you, you know, started off with this morning. Well, I guess I agree with you when I, I think at this point we're looking for solutions when people well, speak exactly. on this matter right. rather than allegations but truth be told i was wondering if the minority had the chance to be the ones to pass the ghana card at the time they were in power mm. seemingly because that law was there this is the law that they would have used to work i'm wondering if at that time they would have amended it so that it will cover the voters id but in the instance that the law remains as it is mm. now we're going to have to roll out this Ghana card without the voters' ID. I was looking at them at least, even though they've taken that stance that they think the law goes against capturing majority of the Ghanaians, which is agreeable. We've all agreed that is a wrong way to go. As it stands now, if you have a law in place and law is binding, you have nothing but to go with it. And subsequently, then try to look forward to how you can change it so that it covers Ghanaians. We've had so many things going out, even in you know min when minority was in power. Mm. Things that will go out because there's a law that gives us an entrenched position and as it is being ruled you look at ways of formulating a law that will capture a broader group until then this is what we have mai says they i mean their hands are tied because you have put out a law that makes them work as they do right. until then what can we do i was looking forward to minority just going ahead with this yes i don't think it will take away the fact that they are against it if they you know roll onto the card but mm. as they're rolling on into it then they fight to get the voters id to be incorporated uh, that's what but, but I that's okay. the but, but of course, I, I think that the issue is to take a look at how, because you see, when, if we are not careful, mm. the, at the end of this project, the whole uh, thing becomes political. You see, um, the, the law has been passed. Right. As for me, that argument that because the minority sat in parliament and passed a law so they cannot complain it, it, it's not logic mm. it, it, for me it is not logic at all i mean we have seen several laws approved by parliament that majority of Ghanaians have uh, uh, spoken against that have been right. changed 
So for me, that argument is, is neither here nor there. Uh, the fact that I agree to a rule and later on I said, I think this rule that we have agreed on is, is bad. For me, it's, it's not a logical argument. I, it, the, when the president says that he has sworn an oath to ensure that the law is upheld, mm. not to worry about it, mm. that's exactly the truth. The law is being made. We have to ensure that the, the Ghana card, uh, the, the, when the project is completed, we don't have non Ghanaians mm. on it. Mm -hmm. So, in attempt at preventing non Ghanaians from getting onto it, the concerns are that the voter ID card could be in the hands of some non Ghanaians. And so let's keep that aside and use the passport and, and, the, and the voter ID card, the uh, birth certificate. The other concern being raised is that a lot of Ghanaians do not have this particular mm -hmm. passport and ID card. How then do we meet them? We are told that there are ways through which you can get onto the system without a passport and a voter uh, a birth certificate. In fact, mm -hmm. I have even spoken to the member of parliament for second D who says that you don't need any ID at all to register onto the Ghana card project. Mm -hmm. So my, the point I'm making is that if this is the truth, can we sit down and meet those who think that the passport and the birth certificate uh, thing is a problem? Can okay. we sit down and meet them and talk? You see, I am seeing the president as the father of the nation. Mm. Everyone agrees that the Ghana card is key to formalizing the economy. Now that we are uh, on the road to doing it, and there are people raising concerns, mm. can we, as a country, come down to our level so that we don't seem to say that a particular uh, uh, sector of society right. is against it and so right. uh, we will go ahead and do it. Mm -hmm. When we end the project, mm -hmm. we would have politicized this and we will not be able to look. I also had an argument about people getting onto the uh, using uh, the Ghana uh, had the GPS to register. Mm -hmm. Look, sometimes uh, people must know what you are talking about. Exactly. I have been to certain parts of the country Okay, where you go there and you turn on I your phone and you get the signal from Burkina Faso and Togo and other places. So you turn your phone and you say, welcome to Orange. And I said, Orange indeed. <laughs> this is Ghana. Okay, right. now how is that person going to get uh, the GPS? Mm -hmm. We are told that get people to come and vouch for you. So you see, these challenges are there. Okay. So let us get everybody to sit and see that. Look, if someone is in a, a region where he can't get the GPS. What else can the person do? Yes, right. That is the, the point I'm coming yeah, from. So the challenges are there. But let us get everybody to understand that this challenge can be dealt with. That challenge can be dealt with. So that we don't end up saying that. A section of society do not want it. Other than that, yeah. we end up politicizing the whole thing. That is my argument. I so really the president is raised concerns. I am thinking that he would rather get, get to see the minority, sit down with them, and say, look, these challenges that you're raising, this is how we want to go about it. Because it looks like the NIA is unable to convince some section of society that the challenges they are raising, there mm -hmm. are solutions to it. Mm. And so as a father, I'm thinking that we can get to them. Look, I like the president when he said that we're going to do things differently. This is where we want to see the president do things mm. in the past. We have seen situations where opposition raises an issue. The ruling government says, we'll, we'll go ahead. If you remember the famous under Mr. Rollins. Right. Okay, if you remember that. Mm -hmm. So I'm saying that at this point, let us yes. sit down. Right. Get the opposition leaders, sit them down, let them tell us the challenges. The president said, look, these challenges you are raising, we can deal with it, and then we'll move on. I agree. This project, you don't have to politicize this project. At all. For me, but that is the argument I am making. Ghanaian. So let's, let's hope that the, the, the president will take another action apart from saying that the minority is, is, is against it. But of course, government has banned you know, foreign travels of its appointees, excluding mm. the Minister for Foreign Affairs, rightly so, because I'm sure she would have to go in and out of the country to make sure that we are being broken a good deal. But apart from that, is it because we're looking at the costing mm. that is involved in these things? What is the cost to it? Is it that people are inflating their you know, budgets when they have to to travel people are just taking advantage mm. of it i guess it's good that they're looking at it but i hope it doesn't interrupt how we you know the government um goes about its activities in ghana and abroad mm. to help us uh, if, if you read a statement from the chief of staff it suggests that uh, mm. a lot more work is is On down here so don't go <laughs> you see uh, emma simply this is long overdue mm. and and this uh, for me is not only for ghana alone right. look we're in the 21st century 
where Technology. you can sit, yes, you can sit in Accra and speak to Donald Trump, speak to Theresa May, Angela Merkel. Yes, if you come to the African continent, if it's Paul Gagame you want to speak to, mm. you can reach him. Every part of this, can, uh, this world, if you want to reach, you can. Mm. Okay, so for me, it is long overdue. Yeah, the traveling is too, it's just too much. Yeah. Let's cut it. It costs us money, and a lot of work is left undone. Well, so it is good the president uh, is doing that, that Let's point. see how it works. But mm. it's also at the local travels. You go to funerals <laughs> on weekends, and you see vehicles with green number mm -hmm. plates, engines on for four hours. With While the funeral is on. With the AC on. But anyway, let's go out to Takradia Rand and see what you think about this ban of foreign travels that has been issued by the president. Let's rant with Eric this morning. Oh, well. But... I mean, right. Again, we'll go to Takadi to see what their views mm. are this morning. But interestingly, I no, think, it, mm, it, like you said, it, the local it, travels it, are also it important. It is good to stop uh, the local travel. And I'm saying that we should also take a look at the local. Look, I said that take a trip mm. on weekends. And I travel a lot on weekends. And I see. And we have spoken about this Several over and over again. Vehicles with green number plates belonging to the state at funerals, weddings, church services. Mm. And drivers in vehicles with engines on for five hours because the officer is at the ceremony. Wow. It's also a waste of state money. I'm sure Taka, the people have a lot to say about that this morning. Let's hear them now. Integration, all other categories of ministers cannot travel outside the country. It is unclear why government is taking this decision as the memo that conveyed this message was not explicit on that. This morning on Daily Rants with me, Eric Yawede, where we are coming to you live from Takrade, I'm going to find out from some gentlemen what they make of this arrangement and whether this temporary arrangement should be sustained. Good morning. Good morning. Apome. Um, the ministers a dc ana e de aban na dwuma na oyi de to kwan ko abrochila eh ma ma ati ende da no on the social media letter no nti mu ridi no eh anko ya san papa ba de nyim de gana se yeri ye bibia ye ma ye hu de oye papa na oye papa san de sent to kwan na mo ma ban all kadamu won ye de ma zin anko do do botugwa we letter no timeline so sun ni ho you knew that Wally and Enda and I in 2017. What bandy uh, agencies that more on talk us, government agencies, but later, yet today, oh yeah, uh, cocoa board, what purchase new cars into yes, I banned that bar, so some power, but uh, one million timelines into one million to me appreciate whether good or bad. Well, uh, sir, extra memo, no, that also there. Uh, the impression is that why baby today there's a disruption in government's work, into maybe this arrangement is to prevent them from going outside when or the way bb were inside and see actually even though on your explicit in asia the mana ban all patch uh, so all canada so i'm going to add you know sunday on your a ban a ban nine you see you be able to come on all your disruption on the government bb or what was bb bar what bob wa in the anchor what what your measures are about stop one hour what disrupt governments what to come what the disrupt governments and now one hour you do my papa no so what to more you send there ministries in the mmdc's no most of them had international transactions as you see uh the minister international transactions so about call on hold in this up and down i said about on calling him an unbelievable in the measures now the other mother I want to work to come unnecessary, you know. What people you know, but they banned the whole thing. They allow only two uh, ministers. They will go to work to come. I mean, it's, it's not good for the country. In the other side, I banned it. Yes. But, um, Esha, in this modern age, there will be a friend video conferencing. Do you, must you necessarily go outside and participate in a meeting? Because, about to match Nagana, then whichever foreign partner be a pedal in deal, you know, you can do it via. A telephone conference. even a ban Nankasa or Nana Yam President Nana do Nanka Sampo. I want to go to a dom on one corner, or those even ministers in the video conference or more Ibrahim. 
or suggest it to one of the African leaders there. He will even donate that machine to him. No, we tomb or the oil a money could you a money gun Frank could you or party on that some time ago. It's you been here the African leaders when you watch movies are US government or your president in other state a what to one a money pay for do on one castle one office in your home countries. I won't want where you ever discuss where you ever deal into it hard time or yeah yen a man Paying up the two or Mahmoud Baumia or the Kadi we are in electron or yeah computer aid. No, let's utilize this some of this things. Ninja, I come to Basa Basano, but Asha, um, assuming them friend there, all finance ministers across the across the world will share now a meeting. Let's say Ghana, you decided there, I am young qua. Oh, yeah, because then. I am but now yes because yeah, tele, uh, video conferencing <laughs> can that be possible? My brother, your exceptions, your exceptions. You were there, you there, man paying another minister. Up there, only paying because of one or one. Yeah, conference, conference is a different thing altogether. U.S. and other big countries, you know, work on conferences. But you can interaction or you have a minister to a minister, a minister from Ghana talking to a minister in Egypt. It can be arranged. It's the oh yeah oh yeah the same thing. Conferences the elder one corner one question one drink in as them. But up and I come to know that them here can no. Yeah 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 yeah. Who can I? Yeah, but for that, yeah, two can be brave. Name boom. I come to this view. How about boy? It's banning it entirely. No, I me 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 ne abandon it. Ima, I also say who government decision who then? Yo, the di kind no. Mami fancya Emma wo any ashefuni na. Me jidi say it is a step. In the right direction. Me, you this Oshe communicate about Bonte na a buy actually most specifically or say a temporal ban and was a case in future no or the modalities be bar a bear guide future foreign travels. It means is about who say be a be a two cinema to the near me go a cream so be correct. You know, the first point or making and they say. Or say, sir, I couldn't be breathing a destructive one more by you or Musu Munia Jumano, a destructive one more in performing their official functions locally. Two teams are on interest of foreign trips, and all a the money, but on say insensitive a over say, I be breathing, not say a destructive your local organization and performance up. Never saw by you who be into the Edika and Kurano. Maybe I mean, say a step in the right direction, but any term quickly, no modalities be a was a bani do a quemu na a buane guide foreign travels by an appointees, no or the ban temua and on the boa into minimia and yagi. It is not a total ban ad infinitum, definitely, no very soon modalities, no a beba and will be a who send yet here now. Ben be a news and chebi are somewhere January Namibia. A bank or just send you an impenny for you to two coin and the ministers near the end immediately. And all the ban by somewhere January, so I ban all foreign travels. Nina and was say will be our one specific reasons on only say no say a bomb mine a cardo. A ban will be a one cannot a cacquem nor say a hat or moon you may deal at the local level. Intimidity is a nina step in the right direction. You hear any say only near my big book a quem in term now ban we so. Eti ma left na niema akosu seni ya epeno no. Mijili ze seni ni pati ya no. Ebili bidu na onfa enshishebi eni guidelines. Bi enguwa kwe mua mendi pa. Nipa is prone to abuse. Uwinse unipa nyo opportunities obeti me tuko obeti wa yedi opebi ya. Se obeti na netoso. Aye jume ebebu wa maafo no. Na wafano se wanyanefo. Into a travel. Foreign travels. Are they bad in them in itself? No. Uwe mi kase mu yi pa. Generally, no, there's nothing wrong with it. Who say a bino emma to me a man one mouthful jana name a bino to quite correction near my bar or mouthful to be to quite near the the a bino a kind when you communicate in you say a dubby beer what you say the foreign travel so no it is rather becoming the norm than the exception and it is affecting performance of a penny for what you do locally and on a bino person to whom and a mono e be before him. But the foreign travels per se, there's nothing wrong with travels. No? The hearing is that things will be streamlined for the supreme interest of the populace. Why not a permanent ban, but a temporary ban? The foreign travels 
per se, no, and yet wrong, and it is not inimical. But what is important, and they say the temporary ban, you know, is to ensure said there are proper guidelines. Obibeka said it is quite belated, but it is better late than never. When you realize that things are getting out of hand, you have to put in place strict and needful measures. And then I buy an idea, but it's not necessarily say a ban a hard forever. And then one banning forever. You cannot ban foreign travels forever. But at least you, know, you have to streamline how they are conducted. Okay. Um, assuming there, what's the advice? I ban because the Imelka no. What's the future no, or the timelines? Be about guidelines as to travel and look for more. So what are the advice? I ban Abba Afutu ni adwano. My brother, I ban. Obiero go to Kwanu Ogana ha. Ah, oh yeah, I ban ni paye. Or Minister of Foreign Affairs. One wash na ozi dami ni mene huduma. Into them let the your brother who yami muhu no one fasu osande. I go to me instruct Minister of Foreign Affairs there. Yeni pe biya or to Kwanu all boar for documentation and adi you know. The Mabri, the Mazdin, your womb, not on ma on ye bibi day, ya ye bibi kesibia, because traveling per se no or on say a mambu, no no to the Moroccan. Inti, you could have easily handled this in in, in government circles, sir. Over Fred and Kofua question because Obia no root to Kwan Wagana ha, on burning pain farm and ye. It is already a two matter, nine never catching pain from there this time round, no. I want to be able to be a woman and ask this should be a memo, not a, a band and. Uh, just raise tensions in the country. They oh, they 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 no. Okay, I look at my brother. Look at us. On yes, he has some number. A few money here, no. Now what to see? Now Kofu, we just have to go. Inti, I can't be stressed. Inya me be damn no. Oh my, about twenty years. Ah, old woman, me and you. You who they be born be look at you. Number more hand on one level. What for any minister of foreign affairs? They this time round. Any obiolo to can be on phone for her. Any to can on phone for her. Then they can check. Our only Kwanda or the Kwan, if you the year and the ma or Bobo in now. Now, uh, Obisuba Kade, why don't we give government the benefits of the doubt? Because he at the beer or the Abba, and to make sure that going forward, you know, never be the day. That much as a music can care in a day, let another Abba no air too open to allow us to speculate at us. One, one man timelines the oh temporary you know, is going to be from now up to this now you yeah, well, mmdc is in the state agency so what well, serious transactions well butcher all the benefits my brain into urban dama you better than you will be musa what to can yes we agree what to can or no corner on fatal it's in america day on my timelines there from now maybe in a month's time we are using it to swim lights because our belly obey mommy may win a day bbr what about war but to even implement or make sure the let whatever is in the letter is controlled, you know, on by your robot to work on some and the day a day politicians work a day. Gun of real refrains in them. It's the action area will be free. No, for people to come without our knowledge. It's the American candidate yesterday. A ban why has it or they are all pay. Quite be no one boy. Yem, yem, a juma, ne is a summer no ban. Nem boom, in your baby demo or handle no a different way. My advice, I'm doing my government. Um, you ma if you there a ban decision, it's a rash decision. Exactly, I believe strongly say it's a, a step in the right no, direction. No, I'm saying I'm asking whether it's a rash decision. Not at all. What we say, I disagree with my brother. Say uh, assemblies, ne ministries, ne bebre wo nyumedia umbidi. So we share communicate now. Communicate no, eh, uh, quite straightforward. Wa nkase wa bani foreign activities by ministries and agencies and departments or say ministers nini deputies regional ministers ni mmdc's a specific heads of government agencies exactly in this area everybody say a jumedia be war ministry be and the minister is bad the deputy is bad and there there are other important personalities there who can equally perform such a role up they are not also bad from traveling they can go and perform. Oh, you say the entire idea we question and they say, "Oh, call Uba Regimu, oh, call Baby Adia, oh, Gina, a binding and a name or Regimu is a regional minister and a deputy. Oh, no, no, so I coordinate activities. I want you and your entity. So, no, no, as a person, if he is not all the time on the ground coordinating and ensuring that things are done in the right direction, no, no, no.
child to cry. No, judge the other people. Or what? And no, no, it is the region and the government that will suffer. And to me, me only say it is not a ban or it doesn't bar obia or your juma bia or bebia from traveling by specific people. Okay. Now, the Ami brother can't back on so I make an end and they say most of the time, you know, Sabai to an Amombisa on say public outcry. I buy now who say a Nyama way critic problem. People are also complaining about it. And if you are a government in this political arena, a woman, if you want to take step, it is also proper that the populace also get to know what you are doing. The okay. communicating here is in the right direction. Okay. Thank you very much. So you, these are the views of the gentlemen that I have here with me from Takrade. You can also go onto our various social media platforms and post your comment there. My name is Eric Yawaje. Thank you so much for watching. Okay, welcome back uh, to the morning and the newspapers are ready. You've seen the Daily Graphic, the Times, the Finder, the Daily Guide and Business and Financial Times. The front pages are full of uh, news and uh, the Ghana card is on. The president has responded to uh, some concerns raised by the minority. Uh, the president has ordered presidency is given a directive. Uh, ministers, this is uh, banned from uh, foreign trips, uh, were told uh, apart from the Foreign Affairs and Regional Integration Ministry. And uh, the uh, issue of uh, uh, judges also in the Ghanaian Times yeah, thinking of uh, uh, going on strike. We'll take a look at all those issues when we have uh, the time. My guest this morning, uh, my extreme left is a great Accra uh, chairman of the NDC. Joseph Niabe Kuka. Good morning. Good morning, my brother. Hope you're great. My brother is great. Mm -hmm. you, you had a good weekend. Uh, we can't complain. Okay. <laughs> and uh, we'll come to talk about your uh, party's uh, elections over the weekend quickly. And then I also have, uh, next to him, uh, the communication director of the uh, PNC, Emmanuel Wilson. He's been missing for some time back. Good morning. <laughs> good morning, Bright. I hope and you're doing well. I'm doing well. Good to be here. Thanks for joining us. And yeah. the member of parliament for the second day constituency, a member of the NPP, Honorable Andrew Japan Mesa is also here. Good morning to you. Hope your weekend was Good morning, fantastic. my good friend. Yes, it was good. Mm, good. Yeah. Well, good Thanks for your time with us. Always a pleasure. Right. Uh, let me quickly start this conversation. Is that okay? Let me give you just a minute or two. Uh, the party's uh, um, uh, constituency elections yeah. over the weekend. Uh, guide daily guy says there were chaos in some uh, part of uh, some constituencies. Uh, you have to read the story, but uh, the story put the chaos rocks NDC elections uh, in the daily guide. Uh, how chaotic was it? Uh, let me say good morning to your good self and my colleagues here, especially my old oh boy. Uh, unfortunately, he didn't meet me in school, so. <laughs> <laughs> My friend from the uh, PNC. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, and also to your uh, good uh, uh, viewers out there, uh, Saturday was a very good day for the NDC. Mm -hmm. I must congratulate uh, the many delegates who despite the rains uh, on Saturday morning, drunk to the various polling stations to to cast their vote for the new constituency executives uh, to be elected. Uh, in Greater Accra, we did 30 constituencies. And out of that three, we had a little bit of problems in the three constituencies. That was uh, Padina, Tema East, and uh, Okankwe South. Uh, the problems aren't uh, that so huge to have caused any chaos, you know. No, some of the boxes like, were destroyed in Kofuridia. That's what we're Oh, well, I'm talking about Greater Accra. Oh. I haven't advert myself to confirm other regions. Other regions. I'm talking about Greater Accra, where I went around most of out of the 30 constituents, I went to about almost 20 of them to ascertain what was going on. You know, m the problem was that uh, normally we'll have done the youth and the women elections a day before the main elections. Unfortunately, this time uh, we, we, we put all together. So what happened in the morning, we had to do the women and the youth elections mm -hmm. before having to do the, 
And you know, we had a problem in the morning, the rains, it was raining. And most of this exercise was done uh, 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 outdoor. So because of the rains, the start of the program delayed. Some start about 11 o'clock, some at 12 o'clock. And you know, people are converged in these places since 7 o'clock. And you know, when you put a lot of people together, yeah, they are human beings. At, at, the, at, the, at the certain stage, they get agitated because people have other things to do and they assume that they will have to, they, they thought they would come and vote early and go home. Unfortunately, because of the delay and the, the fact that we had the, uh, the rains also impeding progress, uh, people got in a few uh, constituencies, they got a bit agitated. But, uh, and also, there was this, uh, you know, most of the, the bio the the, the, the material, the, the, the data that are used for elections, sometimes you have challenges. Because it's a human institution. Somebody goes there and probably his name is not there and then all manner of things uh, happen. But eventually, I don't know, they were able to do 27 out of 30. And in Greater Accra. In the Greater Accra. And okay. uh, the, the three will be done on Wednesday. So, as far as Greater Accra is concerned, I want to congratulate all the uh, delegates who, who, who went to exercise their franchise and, uh, and said that it was, a, it was a job well done. I'm grateful. Uh, Wilson, the NDC's uh, uh, elections, uh, did you monitor how did it go? Any lessons for the PNC? <laughs> well, good morning to our viewers mm. as well, particularly to all members of the People's National Convention. Yes, I did. I monitored it a bit, uh, as in following what the media was reporting. Mm. And I realized that in all, about three or four constituencies per what the media reported were not able to vote. Okay. Um, I remember one coming from San Erigu, right. another one coming from Menchia. It says, Court stops mention of NDC elections, Sanerigu uh, over voting, and because of that, it didn't take place and all that. But I have also listened to some of the uh, spokespersons of the NDC, particularly some of the national officers, and they have indicated, just like Chairman Adi mentioned here, that in all it went well for them. Um, it is not for me to judge whether they did well or, or not, not because they have their own standard mm. as to how they want to go about it. The only thing that PNC will do, just as we did when the MPP was uh, going through DS, their constituency elections and all that, is to wish them well because at the end of the day we believe in multi-party democracy and we believe as a People's National Convention that if your colleague political party is strong, uh, we can then have a formidable uh, country because whether in power or in opposition, if you are very strong, you'll be able to help move this country forward. The other thing which I think we need to look at has to do with, again, particularly with those few constituencies that I monitored. Mm. Uh, how come there will be an overvoting in, in a constituency in local election? election you understand? How come there will be uh, to the extent where some individuals will go and hijack ballot boxes, which was recorded per the, per the media report that I got. The other one, where, which I also got a confirmation from one of their national officers in speaking on one of the radio stations, says that there were challenges, and the challenges had to do with even the printing of the ballot uh, papers. Mm. Some candidates and this person made reference to one constituency where the incumbent chairman who wasn't contesting <laughs> had his picture on that on ballot on paper ballot. you understand and so i keep asking myself what was what were the internal mechanisms that was Did you know put it in has place pulled to? out at the last minute or something well per, per the report that came from and i'm talking of kofi adams their national organizer mm -hmm. he emphatically stated that the incumbent chairman was not part of the contest and yet his, his, his photograph, photograph was on it mm -hmm. and so these are the challenges that we need to find but of course if if you've run an election before uh, as a national officer who has been very uh, directly involved in in elections from constituency wards and other 275 constituencies, you should be sure that at least there will be one or two hitches here and there. Okay, yeah. I'm grateful. Uh, Olaf Mesa, the, the NPP takes the, the notch a bit higher. Yours is the national one. Uh, come some two weeks from now. Uh, the, the NDC just finished. Yes. 
any any lessons? Well, good morning to my colleagues. Mm. Uh, yeah, and uh, to our cherished uh, viewers out there, particularly uh, the good people of Second D. Uh, uh, well, I can assure you that no such incident will occur at our national conference. Mm. You know, uh, it's it's surprising uh, when it suits my brothers on the other side uh, to describe clear violence in an election as small agitation, and that these are usual uh, with uh, human institutions. Uh, you recall when we had incidents during our police station executive elections, mm. the attribution that they made to us. But when they got to their turn, yeah, I agree. Uh, human institutions, uh, people will be dissatisfied with the certain process. And so they will react in a certain manner. So let's be consistent in our criticism. Okay, when, when it's our political opponents who are experiencing incidents of that nature. Mm. Let's be fair and candid and say that, look, well, manage it, these things happen in an election. But they attributed to the MPP what clearly every Ghanaian knows we are not. Violent party. All sorts of utterances. Now when it gets to the attend, Mr. Abdukoka is sitting here conveniently disregarding all the ones that happened across the country and is saying that he hasn't averted his mind to any of them save Greater Accra, where he had three issues. The reports are replete with incidents across the country. But, you know, if we were to toe their line, we would remind Ghanaians of the kind of political party that they are. Uh, they themselves they were born out of violence, so these things are not surprising, really. But the truth of the matter is that elections have issues across board. National elections, constituency elections, they all have issues. But my friends on the other side, conveniently, don't see anything wrong with the things that are happening now. But when it was the MPP, uh, hell broke loose. I wish them well. I hope that they can resolve these matters uh, so that uh, uh, there is some sanity within their party. I always say that as a government party, we need a strong opposition, uh, credible opposition that would put government on its toes. Uh, so I hope that they can resolve whatever outstanding issues that they are uh, and learn some lessons going forward. Uh, we all need to, uh, as political actors, uh, learn from each other so that we can manage our internal election processes better going forward. All right. I think, yeah. My, my, okay. My, 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 my brother here is just missing the point. You know, the, the, look, the incidents that happened over the weekend is nothing to write home about. I mean, there was any, any major incident that you want to cry about. Stealing the ballot boxes. Just, the nobody stole the ballot box. Check that. No, no. no. Well, the reporter did not. Oh, please, and relax. 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 So, I, I, and that's the last thing I'm There were reports of incidents in, uh, for instance, Kofodia and the second place okay. where Malaysia were stolen, were told, no. where some agitations, like you referred to. I said that agitations were not something to write home about. Yeah, but they were not, they were not, that people were hitting their heads or drawing knives or, or no, I, I, no blood was spilled. Okay. Thank you. I'm grateful. No blood was spilled. Now, let's go to the Daily Graphic. Uh, the Guide and Times uh, have a story to President Slam's minority for stance on ID. The President is spoken uh, finally. He, he's taking a swipe at minority in Parliament for what he describes as their attempt to thwart the implementation of the national ID uh, after they supported the promulgation of the law by Parliament. That's how the paper put it. Uh, he wondered why the NDC members of Parliament, who had supported the exclusion of voters' ID cards, NHIS cards, among others, 
as uh, qualification for uh, a national ID would turn around and with the support of their party leaders bastardize the implementation of the same law and even issue threats of civil war. Uh, this was in Brekusu here. Uh, Brekusu in the Eastern region. Now, uh, the president was at the Ashes University. Uh, he cited uh, copiously from uh, the hands out of parliament, that's the paper, and uh, told Gavin how NDC members had supported the law in parliament and he's wondering why they have made a runabout. Let me come to you. The president has responded to the uh, minority on on this issue. He thinks that, and his the, the the thrust of his argument is that once they sat in parliament to pass the law, you can't turn around and 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 be against the law. That's what he said. Uh, 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 right. A few weeks ago, I watched you on television with the guy from uh, NIA mm. and the parliamentary ranking member. Uh, on uh, uh, that committee, that committee, and a lot of things were said. Look, all that we are saying is that expand the scope of information gathering, expand the scope of information gathering. That's why the fact that we have a law, but we do the law, don't we go and amend the law? If the law, we, we do the law, if we find that the law <laughs> is inhibiting our progress, <laughs> don't we go back to look at the law in this country from time memorial? Laws have passed, and as we go along. Don't you go back and look at the law and then change it and then amend it to suit the, the, uh, the circumstances of the times. We do that. So this is not new. Why should we argue about things that are, I mean, things that rather it sends us backwards? Mm. All that we are saying is that let us expand the scope of information gathering. And we are saying that the, ID, the, the voters register, uh, the, the voters cards, if in the, during the course of their deliberation in parliament, they did not take cognizance of that. Mm. And, 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 and they don't make sure, they don't add it to it. Now that we are practicalizing it, actualizing it, we realize that there's a flaw. So let us go back and look at it. I mean, we don't have to split heads over this. We don't have to. Because the voter's ID card, the, what we are capturing now as a national ID card, mm. have already been captured on the voter's ID card. Where there was a problem about people using a certain document, we went to the Supreme Court. The Supreme Court said, go and sanitize it. The Election Commission came back and told us that X amount of X number has uh, have been taken out those who use that card, which was not uh, the N N NHI card, which was, 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 not, uh, was not legal, had been expounded from the uh, register. So we use the, the voter's ID card, which has got our biometric details, Data. to go and vote for my very good friend sitting here. Japan, to be an MP, to use the same card to vote for the president. I will tell you, I will say that, I read that it says that a lot of, uh, uh, the president says that the ID card, uh, the voter's ID card is not uh, legitimate or whatever, it is because you have aliens in that card. So it means that our election that we, we went is, is, is not a void, if the president is saying that. But we agree that the, 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 the ID card, uh, the, the voter's ID card, it's, it's, it's a legal document that accepted as part of our uh, uh, things, uh, our, our identification. And we have used that to, to cast for 60 million people are in possession of those cards. You understand? So, where, 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 what's okay. the problem? All that we did, we are saying is that expand the, 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 uh, the frontiers to enable okay. more requirements. Requirement. The document exactly. And this one too, we are speaking as we are and we are fighting and we are uh, accusing ourselves. I don't know if you don't have a common platform to believe in what we are doing, that the, the whole process becomes bastardized. And if a section of people said that they are not going to they are not going to comply with it, are you going to are you going to make them uh, are you are you going to disenfranchise them or are you going to uh, say they are not Ghanaians? So instead of us splitting heads, let us come find a common a common platform. And then deal with it. Then coming to argue, we have, you flogged this thing the last time. I was mm -hmm. I was at home watching you. You flogged it. And today, no, 24th of June. 25th of June. 25th of June. We've come back again. And now the whole newspaper is full of Ghana card. It's me that there's something wrong, fundamental wrong with it. That we have to sit down as a people of one common destiny to find out how best we can resolve the issue. We can't continue 
We can't continue always splitting heads over things that probably will not the benefit of everybody. And that's what, that's what we end up doing all the time. All right. Let me take a quick break. When I come back, uh, I'll get uh, Honorable uh, Mesa and uh, Mr. Wilson to take their submission on the personal reaction to the minority on the cards. All right, welcome back. Uh, thanks for staying with us. Now, uh, Mr. let me quickly uh, come to you. So, the, the, the president finally responded. Uh, Honorable Adekoka thinks that it simply uh, it, we should go back and sit down and take another look at it. Is the president's stance something that we cannot change? Well, um, to start with, mm. uh, I don't have a problem if we want to have another conversation about this. Right. But what bothers me is that we have had a conversation and the participants of the conversation have turned around holding this nation to ransom as if they did not participate in that conversation. I don't have a problem. Yes, let's revisit our conversation. Mm. But to suggest that the law that we had a conversation about before we passed is seeking to denationalize a certain category of people can only be mischievous. Okay. Look, the Parent Act, and I've forgotten the number, I think it's Act 750. Act 750, yes. Okay. Had a broad scope. Now, following the decision of the Supreme Court in the Abu Ramadan case, an amendment was tabled, and the proponent of the law felt that, look, let us relook at the identification mechanism that is required to enable you to obtain a <coughs> Ghana account. And decided that, look, let's focus on the primary document of proof of birth and then the national passport and eliminate all the other sources of identification that was required. Mm. That was submitted to Parliament. We had a conversation about it. And the contribution that members of the NDC made was what the Excellency the President made references to. Right. Now, the law did not limit the IDs to only these two. It extended it further that, look, in the event where people do not have birth certificates, and yes, or pass we recognize the reality that some people in our country don't have birth certificates and passports. But those people have relatives. <laughs> and so those relatives can depose to an affidavit confirming their citizenship. And based on that, they will be issued with cards. You see, I get the sense. And in any event, right, how did people obtain the voter's ID card in the first place? Did they use only passport and birth certificate? Not really. Didn't they have a form that they failed to confirm that they were Ghanaians and two people vouch for them. So what? why are we splitting heads over this? If the very document that they say we should use by all means mm. gave room for people to register without any ID and I have said that the national ID card is not an improvement of the voter's ID card. It is not. Sunday's because, no, it's not. <laughs> and I, I, no, it is not. Look, the national ID card is for every citizen. Mm. The voter's ID card is a voluntary card that people who are 18 and above and eligible to vote mm. can opt to pick. So it's not the same. It doesn't have the mandate. It is not the same. What mandate? To be used as... Uh, to capture there is no the mandate to uh, capture list. voter's list. The Ghana ID will no. be used. It will no. be used. Let, let, me, let me explain to okay, you. Explain. When we have a national database that has the details of every single Ghanaian on it, there will be the need for us to spend another money registering 80 years and above to vote. We can extract that information from the Ghana card and use it to vote. That's the difference. I see. And we need to get it clear. Okay? We cannot eat our cake like they say and have it. We participated in the process. 
with the view at the time they were acting as patriotic Ghanaians to set up a close to some sanitized voter national database system that we can all have faith in. Mm. It is not, we cannot pretend to be ostriches, okay, and, and, and sit here and pretend as if we all do not know that there are problems if they with the If they make mistakes in the past, they can't change. Right. Mm -hmm. I've said to you here and on previous shows that if they have legitimate concerns, they know the means to articulate them. Let them table an amendment. You okay. Know, you, know it can, let, you know it can be done. What, what do you mean by it can be done? W once it's an, it's an a, a, a lie, it has to come from it is the, not an the ally. presidency. If it is your short parliament listen, MP listen, can please, table an please, amendment. Please, to, let, amend, let, let me correct you. Okay, please correct. This act 950 mm. is an act of parliament. It's not an ally. Okay? So, so, so Mr. you are insisting that the MPs can table a motion to, absolutely. to amend the They can table an amendment. To to and and you go through the process. Great. Uh, I'd okay. like producers to get a call in because yes, the argument I'm, is I'm telling you, once, I'm not once once I was in parliament when this law was passed. Once it's gone to the it presidency, is not an ally. it is only the presidency that can issue that an amendment false. in parliament. That is a complete falsehood. Any member can do it. of parliament can, do it. can table an amendment. That is mm -hmm. not to say mm -hmm. that when you table an amendment, okay. amendment I, 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 I want my producers to get another MP. Yes. Yes. Let's do this for ourselves. Indeed, <laughs> it is the, the members of parliament <laughs> cannot table an amendment <laughs> now. Who, who, where who, the law has to be. When can they? When can they? When can they? We are told that it is only the president that can. I am telling you. An amendment. Look, right. So that's why I always carry my pouch by my side. You quickly go. Because I have the rules and the constitution in there. Okay. That I can point to you that any member can table a bill before okay. Parliament. Well, probably, let, let and me bring amendments uh, are Lucy. originated as bills that are tabled and go through the motions. Okay. It doesn't mean that when it is tabled, it will carry. But if they so wish, they feel so strongly that at the time that this amendment came up, they were all sleeping and did not consider the need for us to include the voters id card mm. and that it is only seven months after the fact that they are waking up all of a sudden and so wish to table an amendment they can do so okay and if they do so we will debate it okay but let's not play the political chancellor in the media and split heads and you hear people who are supposed to be responsible general secretaries of political Please. parties <laughs> issuing threats that we will get to Ivory Coast over this. We are ready. Let us get there. Ready to do what? <laughs> Whatever threat that you should. <laughs> but you, you have just done no, it. No, no, no. What can you say? 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 What can you uh, right. it will be very people. good if you get um, a further clarification on who can really bring an amendment to this okay. for the benefit of all of us so that we can all stay, uh, be abreast with it. Now, the issue of uh, the national ID card, for me, there are some few issues around it. Mm. The first one has to do with even the costs in implementing it. But clearly, that's not what we are discussing today, so I don't know what to go there. The second thing has to do with what everyone keeps talking about. Unfortunately, the president has also gone into that tangent. My brother this morning has also done the same. I have heard it everywhere, particularly coming from the uh, communicators of the MPP. And that's the reason why I think it's very unfortunate to hear the president also go into it. The argument they are all championing mm. is that oh, this thing came to parliament. Yes. Mm. Uh, the opposition was there. So if they were there and they agreed to it, it means that we should go on with it. For me, I think this is, this is really an unfortunate argument uh, that should be championed by any other person. You know why? We've been in this country. You remember where parliament approved a loan. And after a due diligence, it ended up being that the loan was coming from a saloon. 
Bright, you are with me. I am with you. That the yeah. loan was coming from a saloon. And so, and there has been so many instances where Parliament has approved a number of things and further check indicates that uh, the rationale for approving it wasn't really tangible. And so we have to go back and, and, and do what needs to be done. And so if anyone should create the impression that the fact that it has gone through parliament, it means that we should accept it as it is. Nobody it is quite so fortunate. So. That's exactly what the president if, said. If that you don't get exactly the context, no. If you no, don't no, get no, the context, that is exactly... But, but let me, let me, no, 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 please, please, not please, 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 please not go into that. Yes, please, please, please. please. You gave your submission. Let me do okay. mine. Please. No, 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 if anyone wants to create the impression that an issue goes to parliament mm -hmm. and because it has gone to parliament, it should be accepted as the whole and the truth. We don't go that way. We are in this country, and I'm giving an example. I'm saying that in this country, we have had parliament approving a loan. After the approval, a due diligence was made, and it ended up that that, that loan was supposed to come from a saloon. The fact that issues go through Parliament doesn't mean that it, 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 it is 100% absolute. And so anyone who wages into that kind of communication, I find it to be very unfortunate. And that is why I find it so disappointment, uh, disappointed that the President will even want to go into that kind of argument. But, but, but be, again, the other argument I've heard is that, oh, Abu Ramadan took it to uh, court and says that people who are holding uh, uh, the voters' ID card can not all of them are Ghanaians. Why? When it went to uh, court, what was, the, what was the directive from court? That there should be a scrutiny of the voters' register. Right? Did it happen or it didn't happen? It did. Well, the, once the court ordered, we, yes. we presume there was. It did. Because okay. EC came out and mentioned a particular figure and said that these figures have been taken out of the register. So what is the assumption? The assumption is that those individuals who were not eligible to be on the register, they've been taken out. That is what it means. If you have a problem with that, go back to court and let court give another order and say that, look, those in the, in the register, even though EC has done what you told us to do, we still feel that it is not absolutely done. Amazing. So we need it to be done again. That is what should be done. And so anyone who wants to make argument based on these two, and expect us all to believe it. I find it very difficult. But 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 what what is really the issue? We are we want to register, we want to have a national ID card. The rationale is that we want to have each and every Ghanaian holding a card, isn't it? <laughs> if you go to our if you go to our constitution, if you go to our constitution, uh, chapter seven, chapter seven. Article 42, every citizen of Ghana of 18 years of age or above and of sound mind has the right to vote. That is what it says. Every citizen of Ghana. Now, if I'm holding an ID card, per the expressions in this constitution, what does it mean? Yeah, Ghanaian. <laughs> per the expression in this constitution, the constitution that the MPs themselves derive their authority from. Yeah, the constitution, the provision in it says that if I'm holding an ID card today, a it, ID. I, I, it means a, voter's, a voter's ID card. Okay. It means that I'm a Ghanaian. If I'm not a Ghanaian, I'm not eligible to, to, hold to do that. And we are saying that the rationale for having a, vote, a national ID card is to put all citizens or to ensure that citizens are holding ID cards. That's the rationale behind this national ID card uh, uh, thing that we are doing. And if the constitution, the same constitution tells me that I'm a Ghanaian because I'm holding an ID card. Where does it say so in the constitution? It tells us. But I just read it. How do you understand this provision? <laughs> how do you understand it? No, no, how do you understand it? No, no, read this. Uh, no, right, 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 of 18 years yes. Yes. of age yes. or above, yes. Yes. and of sound mind, yes. Yes. has the right mm -hmm. to vote. Yes. What does it mean? Oh. What, what, what does it mean? It is English. It is English. Ah. It is English. Yes. 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 What does it mean? How do you get okay. okay. so the right to vote? So you get the right to vote. What does it mean? How do you get the right to vote? Please, please. I'll tell you we're coming to help. But what you are saying, I don't know. No, I'm trying to correct you. You are not correcting. You are confusing yourself. No, you are confusing. You don't understand the provisions. You have the right to vote. It means that I have the right to vote. Who 
who has the right to go to this country? Who have got the card? Right. Isn't it? Right. Who have, if I don't care, if I don't have a voter's ID, can I have the right? Card. Can I vote? What does it do? I have a voter ID card. Can I vote? No, you can't. Where is a card? Where is a card used in this provision? Yes, Alamas, say. Are you saying that if you don't have a vote ID, can you go and vote? Listen, 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 listen to what he read. Uh, what is this guy saying? He says that every citizen of Ghana, yes. 18 years yes. of age yes. or above, yes. and of sound mind, yes. has the right to vote. Exactly. Where does it mention card? Uh, but then it goes back to the voter ID card. It goes back to the voter ID card. I give you the time. I indicated to you. No, no, please. Right. That if you don't draw the distinction between the voter card and the national card, you will be going in. Right. Let me continue. 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 Let if you want to be eligible to vote, you must be a Ghanaian. Exactly. Now, okay. if exactly. it tells us that yes. if you want to vote, you must have a voter's ID card. Yes. Having a voter's ID card means that you have passed this provision. This is common sense and, and logic. And, and, and so if I have a voter's ID card, based on this provision, I am a Ghanaian. On, on on I am a Ghanaian. Now, if a national ID card wants to bring on board Ghanaians, mm -hmm. And I'm holding an ID card, which per the provision in the constitution mm. makes me a Ghanaian. What prevents me from being put on the national but ID from card? From using the voter ID card to get to on register. The national ID. So for me, I, all I'm saying is this. All I'm saying is that if we really want to fulfill the rationale, the rationale for having a national ID card mm. is that we want to bring on board Ghanaians. Exactly. Now, Parliament may have passed a law. At the end of the day, we've all realized that look there were some loopholes in it. And I'm saying, I've established earlier on that the fact that Parliament has passed a law doesn't mean that okay. it is absolute. And so if we, we've realized some no, loopholes in it, if we've realized some loopholes in it, Please. what it's prevents very, very us as a nation? What, what is the fear? What is the danger? What prevents us as a nation from going back to say that, look, we realize that we made a fundamental error, and the fundamental error is that those having a voter's ID card, which who pay the constitution, are so are Ghanaians. Uh, we realize that we did not involve them or we did not bring them on board. So let's, so bring, let's them bring them on board. What is the difficulty? Let me go to me. What is the fear of the minority in parliament about? not using the voter id can how do we get on with this how are we able to get perhaps the ruling party or government to agree to a sit down and another look at this issue there is no fear at all we have no fear the minority at has no, no fear at all we are saying of that losing no, out no, in any way no no we are saying that like my brother just said right we have gone through the process the process that we are going through now capture our biometric data. We've spent that huge sums of money to do that. It was 16 million people having gone through that process. Now, we talk about the birth certificates and the passport. On record, only 9 million Ghanaians have both passport and birth certificates. Only 9 million Ghanaians. And we want to register at least for, for argument's sake 30 million Ghanaians. If you have a chunk of 60 million Ghanaians holding that the, a document that you have gone through the process, which you have the process, he earlier said that when we're doing the uh, 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 the voters' ID, if you haven't got enough document to prove that you are a Ghanaian, one or two people will have to come and vouch for you. We went through that process to acquire a document. I can't. Why should we reinvent Why it? Why do you reinvent the wheel and say that now we are going to discard all these things and then go to the process of only going to do the same thing and here the, the document you are asking for, only 9 million Ghanaians have gotten it. If you use what you are saying, you've, got, you, uh, you, you've already got 60 million Ghanaians who will assess it. And the difficulty okay. of getting the 40 million becomes minimal. So, like, we, we, we make the laws. After the people who are in parliament, we, 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 we voted them there. They didn't work there by themselves. So if they have gone there and they have gone to sleep, as he was saying, we are not get them to wake up. Okay. They should wake up and do the right thing. Okay. Not what you are telling them. I have a Come in. Look, how, right. it's in, it's where, where can we go? Quickly. Let me, let me, let me, let me. How explain. do we deal with it? I, I wish you well, wouldn't have to go back to... Uh, trying to find well, it's that important for us to split the I comments that I made here. I started off by telling you that I do not have any problem 
with having another conversation. Okay. And so, for him to suggest that I have said that because Parliament has passed it, that becomes an absolute. No, no, no. That you, cannot you be have not that. said it. But there's uh, an argument. Please, please. That's an argument. That's an argument. Please. Now, if you read the statement that the President issued, and I have read it, the entirety of it, not the newspaper publication. Okay, we, we are discussing. Which even you, contains <laughs> the real context. The president may declare that look, he personally, and as a party or as a government, have no interest in this national ID card. He just wants to do his job based on the oath that he sworn to the people of Ghana mm. to get a database that is representative of who are real Ghanaians and that he is not interested in putting in place any impediment to deprive real Ghanaians from obtaining the card. Right. However, we have heard in recent past commentary from people who participated in the decision making turn around, okay, and make utterances suggestive of the fact that this law is bad. And so, in that context, that's why I said that it can only be mischievous, <laughs> pure and simple. And so let's not put words. If we haven't read the statement, let's go back and well, read it. Uh, okay? okay. We just read because if you sit with what the president said, I don't know if you want it to read the text. That is uh, exactly uh, what I'm going to say. I'm not going to say that. 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 I'm Please, please. Wait a let me quickly read this part. Okay. Now, if, if you take a look at the Daily Graphic story, let me read the Daily Graphic story. It said, said, it said, please, please hold on, hold on. Wait a minute, please. That's not appreciated. Wait a minute, please. No, 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 no. The, the, the story, wait a minute, the story as captured by the Daily Graphic is saying, this is the president talking, as written by the Daily Graphic. Mm -hmm. President Okufado said, incontrovertible evidence showed that the NDC supported the national ID bill to be passed into its current form and cited the comments made by the ranking member on the Constitutional Legal and Parliamentary Affairs Select Committee in Parliament, Mr. Inus Fuseni, who was the designated leader of the minority on that committee. He quoted Mr. Fuseni as saying, there's no controversy in the amendment. He goes on to say what he said. Now, the president's worry is that how then do you say this and turn around and say that the law is bad? He, so it, it is not... As saying that the president said, but the I have said you said the president has yes, said. Yes, the argument that if we are not ready to tell you that you read the full speech, if you sit with the report of the president, right. your president, that, that, that is what the president said. Right. 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 What he, let, what let, is reported here is not what the president said. That, that's that's exactly what we are trying to do. Is that your interpretation? That's not what we are That's not what we are saying. Let's wrap up this one. How do we go? Where do we go from here? From the right. Yes, it's important. You know, we are all here to provide education. Right. if you like, to uh, our brothers and sisters out there who may not have the benefit of what you and I have. So it's important that we situate these issues in their proper context. Mm. Okay? I didn't say that the graphic had misreported the president. Okay. I said okay, then, but that... Then, and then, then, listen, then, listen, then, listen. Then, no, it's important. Then, Look. You did not read everything that the president said. I, 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 don't have, no, I, don't, I, don't, I agree. I agree. I agree. I agree. We are, uh, I, agree. I don't have time. I can go on and on and on. No, I don't have a problem. But is that where the story is at? Is that where the... I'm not interested. Listen, right, right. It's important that when we do these things, the president said several things before he related the issue that had transpired in parliament. Right, right. But you haven't read that bit. Right. But you have made this position, and it's right. important. Right. Yes, and I agree. Right. All right. Right. Okay. Right. Right. So the right. president quoted what was said in parliament. Absolutely. Exactly. Exactly. We are saying, the, the majority of us outside parliament <laughs> are saying <laughs> that you are going to disenfranchise 16 million Ghanaians. How so? 
The card, the card that the 60 million donors are holding. You struggle to understand. You are wrapping up this one. Where is the difficulty? The cards that the 60 million Ghanaians are holding went through the process that you are going to use to do the Ghana card. So, so what issue is Ghana please, card please, card please, card. please, so Half of your job Half of your job is cut out Why can't it be? The information is already there Oh, please Oh, please Oh, please Half of the job for the National Identification Authority Is cut out As part of the document that you need To go and register To go and acquire that card Passport birth certificates, I, uh, voters' ID card. Mm -hmm. If you are going to make the argument that there's a flaw in the voters' ID, I can also make the argument that there's a flaw in the birth certificate and there's a flaw in the passport. Uh, so all the documents you are talking about has no flaws. W one minute. Right. How, how do we deal with this? Quickly. For me, this is... Just one minute. So that we not have briefly on the travel ban. This shouldn't be a travel ban issue we'll at all. Mm. If the president was going to make any comments on this, I was expecting him to have given us a way forward. Other than bringing us back to the argument that has been, been all over by communicators of so the people. So how do we... Let us go back and then include the voters' ID card. I'm That's grateful. All. The time this morning says that President Kufado has directed that all foreign travels by government uh, appointees be suspended with immediate effect. Now, the ban is temporary, uh, affects sector ministers and their deputies, regional ministers, their deputies, metro, municipal and district assembly chief executives, as well as heads of government agencies. Directive, uh, however, were told uh, exempt uh, foreign affairs and regional integration ministry uh, the chief of staff signed this honorable minister now uh, this is according to the statement is to ensure that these uh, appointees are working because uh, a chunk of the work is here and also to cut down on uh, cost of traveling good news for Ghana. yes uh, a time i mean uh, this is a government that has been manning the affairs of state for the past 18 months uh, uh, requires some review to be made periodically and I believe that uh, it's arising out of that review that a decision was taken. But how do we ensure that it is indeed adhered to? Uh, uh, in, in fact, these directives come, and then we don't we don't see how they are implemented. Sometimes well, these we, officers we, we, throw we, them we, somewhere. We, and we live to see, uh, of course, uh, clearly, if you disregard clear directives that have been issued by the Office of the Chief of Staff, mm -hmm. uh, you should be prepared to face the consequences. Uh, people. Uh, travel out of the country through only one route and of course state agencies are manning these institutions that they can easily monitor from the office of the chief of staff who is leaving Ghana and who is remaining here. Uh, I think that uh, uh, clearly uh, the intent from what I understand is to provide some uh, standardized guidelines to manage uh, foreign travels you know as opposed to situations where people just leave you know uh, i know that the ministers and deputy ministers necessarily before they leave ghana ought to seek uh, approval from the office of the chief of staff mm. and that this is only being extended to cover mmdc's and other uh, government agencies so uh, i think it's a good thing uh, we should commend uh, the office of the president for this mm. uh, statement right. of course it's not novel we 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 uh, I recall so that uh, in the past uh, <coughs> these directives have been issued. As to whether, like you said, they were abided by is another matter. I'm not in a position to confirm or deny that. But I think that going forward, this is a step in the right direction. And uh, uh, we, we would only uh, await the issuance of the guidelines so that uh, we can engage with our foreign partners, uh, which is also an essential part of our governance system. All right. The, the, this one uh, from government uh, in 2015, the same thing happened. Uh, are we able to monitor how it is adhered to? Yeah, I think before a minister or uh, a government appointee travels mm -hmm. outside the country, of course, he must seek permission from government because somebody is going to foot the bill. <laughs> you, you are not going to, unless you, 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 you are going on your own acc uh, 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 accord. But then, if it's a government or some agency has invited you, even mm. if they are paying for it, must inform the government. So if the government is interested in monitoring, right, they can do, uh, they, they can do it. 
But I, I hope I hope that also applies the president himself. I hope I hope we also check the number of times that he also travels outside the country, because uh, at, at any moment of time we hear that the president is out of the country. So I hope he also because when he's going, he also carries a large entourage of people accompanying him. So I think looking at what is. Uh, 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 ministers and appointees are doing. Mm -hmm. I hope from his own outfit, he also take cognizance of the fact that how many times does he travel a month out of the country? Listen, Bryce, wrap up for me on What this. is the rationale for this uh, directive? Okay, to, to, to get the officer to, to remain in the country and work and also to reduce the cost uh, in, in getting of officers out of the country. You see, I agree perfectly that anything that wants to protect the public place we should applaud. And so I'm happy this directive has come. Now my difficulty again, I mean my difficulty on this is that um, it, it, it seems to be, the, the, gov the government of the day seems to be presenting what we call elimination by substitution. They want to protect the public purse in this aspect and then they go to this aspect and then bloat it up there. Now um, if you look at the the, the uh, you have yes I have documents. <laughs> if you look at if you look at um, the the budget that was presented to Parliament for approval, the one that came particularly from the Ministry of uh, Special Development Initiative. In it, and the budget has been approved. It says that they are going to construct a solar powered mechan uh, me mechanized uh, borehole, one thousand of it. And one borehole is going to cost 132,000 Ghana City to construct one borehole. 132,000 Ghana City. They are going to create a website for that ministry. And that website initially says it was going to use 800,000. When it came into public domain, an argument came about. We ended up reducing it to 80,000 Ghana City. You understand? To create, to create a, a website, 80,000 Ghana City. Now, if the president comes out today and tells us that he, he is interested in protecting the public press, and because of that, we should the uh, MMCs, DCs, and what have ministers and rest should not travel. For me, it doesn't, it doesn't really gel. There are better avenues where, if indeed the president is committed to protect the public press, he can put his energy on. But my difficulty here, again, is this. Let's assume that trade minister wants to travel on an official duty. Is the president saying that they shouldn't travel? Well, is that what they're saying? He said they should stay here and work. That's so, the so if the, I, and I'm very sure when the president made reference to ministers, MNs, DCs, and the rest not traveling. He wasn't talking about their personal travels. He's talking about their official travels. Yeah. And so if today, uh, sports ministry, the minister has to attend a conference somewhere in the name of uh, 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 an international conference that requires the sports minister to be there, is the president saying that he shouldn't go? Is that not part of official duties? All I'm saying is that if the president is indeed committed to protecting Ghana's press, this is not the best way to go. There are other avenues, and for me, there are very, very serious avenues. He should stop misleading us and creating this impression of elimination by substitution. Let's protect the press here, take the I, money, and use it here. That is not the best way to go. We'll get a talk on the It's unfortunate when political actors. Emmanuel Wilson is a complete director of the PNC. Okay. Let's go and read the parliament. Member of parliament for. You bring a document here that nobody can even attest to it. When you are in parliament, you need to have this budget. Let's talk about nurturing businesses now. Government is creating that uh, climate, that entrepreneurial climate. Uh, for people to take advantage. But how do we get the young people to come up with that idea that can be uh, nurtured into big businesses? This morning, the presidential pitch is on. My guest in the studio will tell us exactly what that will do. He's the chief executive officer of the National Entrepreneurship and Innovation Program, John Kuma. John Kuma, once again. Hope you're doing great. Yeah, doing well. mm. So the presidential pitch, what is it? 
Yeah, so this morning, His Excellency the President will be the special guest of honor mm. at the presidential pitch at Moving Peak. It's being organized by the Ministry of Business Development and is targeting um, at the youth between the ages of 18 and 35 years. And it's a, a business, business ideas contest. At the call for the proposal, we received 1,700 business proposals or um, ideas contest from the young people and uh, it's been slated down to 20. Last Friday the top 20 were called for the first pitch before a panel of judges mm. and then eventually 10 of them have been selected to pitch before His Excellency the President this morning at Moving Peak at 10 a.m. So the, the whole idea of the presidential pitch is to help create the entrepreneurial culture and also bring the concept of businesses and ideas among young people. So get them to think. To think business. How they can translate their various business ideas into proper businesses. And His Excellency the President is committed to making Ghana an enterprise nation mm -hmm. where the concept of job creation, the paradigm for creating jobs in this country will then shift from government creating jobs for students out of school to individuals believing in themselves that they can create the jobs with the support from government. So we are creating the necessary enabling environment in the entrepreneurship ecosystem in the country for young people to come out with the business ideas. Mm. I see. So 10 people will, will be picked today. Yes. Now, how was it done, the selection process? 1,700 now to 10. So the first committee sat on all the 1,700 business, business concepts that came. Mm. And then they selected the best 20. And the best 20 were called to physically pitch before the panel of judges. They are made up of um, seasoned entrepreneurs. Magdan is one of them. Uh, Jibodi is another uh, panel member of, the, uh, of mm. the judges and I think Ato, Ato Simpson is also on it and uh, one other person. So they then shortlisted the 20 after listening to based the various... What the people brought. Yes, based on... And, and of course we have four major criteria. We look at innovation, how innovative the business concept is. We look at scalability of the concept. Are we able to scale it up assuming we want to turn it into a business mm. we also looked at feasibility of the concept and then finally impact how impacting is that, that business, business concept be. on the community and then also on job creation because the whole agenda too is to look at how we are able to create jobs for young people mm. and also how to impact on the community so based on these four criteria the judges scaled it down to the last 10. Mm. But the, the 20, the, those who placed from 11 to 20 received laptop each. They are going to be given for, their effort. for their efforts. And that doesn't even mean that they are being left like that. Not they, at they all. They will be helped in some other way. Not at all. Mm. And, the, and the last 10, those pitching before the president, are going to receive financial uh, support ranging from 10,000 cities to 50,000 Ghana cities, which they are not supposed to pay or them say they have a moratorium up to three years after which they will pay with no interest so it's something that is supposed to help them to finance that business concept and, that grow, it. and grow so it. these young ones are not going to go to the banks no to look for money no so that's one step that's one step mm. and so and and all the 10 are going to be supported the, the best thing that has been selected and are pitching before the president mm are each going to receive some form of funding and support. And you said that it is a process where government want to shift attention to the private sector sure. to, to become the provider of jobs. Yes. So this is just the beginning. This is just the beginning. What are the bigger things coming? A lot of big things. As far as this project is concerned. Yes, a lot of big things are happening. In fact, under the NEIP, the National Entrepreneurship and Innovation Program, we also have a, a bigger scale of um, supporting business enterprises in the country and in fact we are just about ending training for 7,000 businesses that we have trained over the period mm -hmm. and we are going to select 500 
of these businesses that we have trained. We train them in about 50 hubs in this country, throughout the country. And then each hub is submitting their report with recommendation for the best 10 enterprises that they recommend for funding. And we hope to get about 500. Now, all these 500 businesses are also going to receive financial support from His Excellency the President. That will also range from 10,000 Ghana cities to 100,000 Ghana cities. So a lot is happening in the ecosystem, the entrepreneurship ecosystem. And after that, in August, we will open the second call for proposals for more businesses to also apply. And His Excellency has given us a seed fund of 10 million US dollars, which we are also supposed to leverage to raise additional 100 million dollars to give out to more to these um, uh, burden businesses and startups so that they can grow. And also we are in close partnership with the campuses, the university campuses, and now we are even looking at the secondary and junior high schools to form entrepreneurship clubs so that the idea of creating ones start on right from the start beginning. from the beginning and and then gradually we'll begin to let the young people of this country believe that if there are no jobs we can create them and that there's support in the ecosystem to create the jobs what is happening today this morning that's uh, uh, 10 a.m yes 10 a.m let's wrap up on okay that. so what's happening is that his excellency the president will be at moving pay mm. the top selected 10 of the business concepts will pitch before his excellency the president and the panel of judges will be present and after that these individual businesses are going to be rewarded for their efforts all right and so uh this one certainly all roads uh, will lead to the moving pick uh, hotel here yes. uh, moving back ambassador hotel here in the crowd the president will be there the top 10 for the presidential pitch would also be there and uh, invite open or no strictly, uh, by, strictly invitation. by invitation yes all right so <laughs> you can't go there if you have no <laughs> john grateful once again thank you very, for your very time. much he's a chief executive officer of the national entrepreneurial and innovation program there at 10 a.m the presidential pitch is on we'll tell you more about that after the young ones have met the president and the panelists stay with us there is more coming up uh, thanks for staying there for us. Uh, let's wrap up uh, the morning uh, with uh, some key conversations that really will excite you. Uh, in the Upper West Ridge, we'll be telling you about uh, some gains made there in the area of uh, health and education. Uh, some facilities that were uh, uh, threatened because they didn't have uh, enough equipment. Uh, the Member of Parliament and the District Assembly uh, had come, had gone to their aid. We'll talk about that. And also, the uh, Tamale there in the Northern Regional Capital. We'll talk about the Mayor's Excellence Awards, exactly what is expected to do in the area of education, water and sanitation, media advocacy, science and medicine, arts and culture, and several others. My guest in the, this morning, uh, Issa Salif Musa, is the PRO of the Tema uh, Metropolitan Assembly. And he's here with me. Come on. Hope you're doing very much. Right. Uh, thanks, thanks for your time okay. with me. Member of Parliament for Wa East, uh, Honorable Godfrey Bayan is also here. Good morning, too. Good morning, Hope my you're brother. Great. Um, okay. Let me uh, start with you on this uh, uh, Tamale uh, Excellence Awards. What is it about? What is it aimed at achieving? Well, thank you very much, Bright. Uh, you will agree with me that um, uh, the MMDAs is a creation of the 1992 Constitution. I think Act 240 or so. Right. And uh, in there, uh, provision has been made for uh, these MMDAs. In other words, they've been taxed. Uh, to initiate, plan, and execute uh, various projects and programs uh, in a bit to ensure the well-being of people in their respective areas. And subsequently, we had uh, an act of parliament uh, that further reinforced you know, all these uh, uh, functions of the MMDAs. And all these MMDAs uh, are supposed to evolve uh, their own uh, vision and mission statements. Mm. And if you look at our vision and mission, uh, somewhere in there, we're supposed to uh, ensure that we uh, bring meaningful development to the people within our jurisdiction. And we do so, or we are supposed to do so, in collaboration uh, with individuals, groups, organizations, uh, both local and international, 
And so it is in line with this provision that the Tamale Metropolitan Assembly uh, had to come out with uh, a further vision to actualize those provisions in our uh, uh, overall development objective. Mm. And so you realize that over the years, uh, groups and individuals have contributed so much to the development of the uh, metropolis uh, in the area of water, sanitation, education, health, and all those things that you think will go a long way uh, to improve upon the living conditions of the people. Mm. And there has been no single location, as far as I can remember, uh, that official dom has been able to locate these people and appreciate their efforts. And so the current leadership at the assembly uh, thought it wise and proper uh, to ensure that we part these individuals and organizations at the back. Right. So that through the awards. Through the awards. And so uh, we started the process over four months ago. Uh, with nominations, we ask the people to nominate people for us. So the, the people were involved. Were involved. People who have uh, caused change because in they the are the, they are the direct beneficiaries of the activities of these individuals and institutions, mm. and so they are better placed to let us know who those people are or who those institutions are, and they have since done that. But on our own as an assembly, we also do know that there are others who have been collaborating with the assembly directly or indirectly and we know them and so all i'm saying to you is that the awards is in two categories i mean two aspects we have the uh awardees the by the people exactly themselves. the awardees in the eight categories that we have outlined and then also the special awards category and so like you rightly said we have a uh, category for education mm. like the media and advocacy health uh, science and medicine, education, arts and culture, uh, economic empowerment, and then uh, <coughs> race sectors, sports, race sectors, and then sports, 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 yeah. work. Yeah. all that. Uh, and those, so all <coughs> things chosen yeah. will be mm -hmm. awarded based Absolutely. Uh, on this. I, yeah. I come back to you, and we can talk about more about that. But let me go to Honorable mm -hmm. Byron here. Now, we turn our attention to the Wa uh, East District mm -hmm. of the Upper West Region, where uh, issues of health and education has received some attention. As we talk now, uh, the Kulin community now has uh, portable water uh, from a borehole. Uh, the Holomuni Health Center has received uh, some equipment uh, as far as uh, their work is concerned. In fact, that is not all. On edu education, uh, some equipment is being uh, sent to the district to help de push up development there. The member of parliament is here. So, it, it, you you went in when mission went there and got these things and now we are here exactly what went into the uh, donations that were made to uh, these institutions uh, thank you my brother and let me first and foremost exp express my sincerest gratitude to missing Ghana mm. because uh, your agenda has been to an F those missing links in the our system such that uh, there are certain areas of Ghana, it look like they are forgotten areas, and nobody seems to care about what is happening in those areas. But by your activities, you have been able to bring to the fore mm. these lapses. And, you know, somebody says that if you are a path maker, if you are making a path, it is those who stand behind and observe that will tell you your path is getting crooked. And so you adjust and then straighten up uh, the, the path. So I think that is exactly what you people have done. Mm -hmm. I have been an MP for the area for uh, some time now, but uh, there were certain specifics that I, I didn't know. For instance, you couldn't go to a community with the large numbers of people and then you immediately know that there's no delivery bed in, 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 in the clinic. But such mission like what you have done mm -hmm. has unearthed some of these things. So I'm most grateful to you mm -hmm. for the whole exercise. Yes, when you actually showed the, 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 the video, a lot of people from all over across Ghana, they were talking about what is, and even people have said that it seems you people have expressed <laughs> particular interest in what is. Why were you showing so many, <laughs> many things about what is? So I'm even much grateful for that. Mm -hmm. But so when uh, that thing came up, and I didn't, the MP somehow I was a bit embarrassed 
why should this uh, uh, gory pictures come out of my my constituency but that is the fact right that is the fact and these facts need to be brought to the fore to the attention of government to the attention of ngos and all those who matter so so the media as a key partner in development is 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 critical very well mm. very well if you hadn't done this work that problem would have been there we would have been grappling with it nobody would, would hear and nobody would mind us but once you did it i think uh, quite a lot of uh, help has come from angles at least the district assembly has undertaken a rehabilitation work of some school projects right. where the people's the uh, kindergarten in Mongwe, for instance now at least have a place that they can study under good mm -hmm. conditions mm -hmm. you know the cooling <coughs> community where the last video showed them drinking water very bad water from uh, the stream wasn't a good picture and so we have been able to put the bowl there, there and so we, we now they, they, they drink good water mm -hmm. and also like uh, okay that is the picture there mm -hmm. you could see what they were drinking but now we they have a borehole and uh, we are grateful for all the effort and at Holomuni for instance where it's a clinic it has been an old clinic it was built during the I think 80s or 90s there about but not even a delivery bed you know so we as MPs, sometimes we are also given small funding. Right. Our fundings cannot undertake uh, uh, capital intensive projects. So sometimes what we do is to fill in the gaps. All right. For instance, you go to a school, a school uh, uh, physical education or games is, uh, is to be part of the system, educational system. But, they don't but you go to school, you, there's no ball, there's no JC, nothing. Okay, uh, uh, well, hold on. Let me. Uh, we'll come back to Tambali, <coughs> but let's watch this. Uh, the the after mission is aired. The stories. The the MP went in, made some donations to uh, both health and educational institutions. There. Uh, let's watch it. The items, which include eight laptop computers, two photocopying machines, four computer printers, three scanners, two digital cameras, 200 footballs, and 100 set of soccer jerseys, were presented to the Education Directorate. The District Health Directorate also received a delivery bed, three motorbikes, three delivery sets, and a theater set. The Member of Parliament also donated some street lamps and 1,000 plastic chairs to be distributed to communities in the constituency. He recommended TV3 for highlighting the plight of road dwellers and recommended that one of the delivery beds be sent to Holy Muni Health Center to augment the only one bed they have. TV3 did an expose within our district and particularly got to Holy Muni, where they discovered that they had only one delivery bed. Imagine if two or three women are pregnant at the center and are in labor. What happens? One is likely to suffer. So I decided that we should include these items. The Upper West Regional Directorate of Education and Acting Director for Wa East Evans Pegba thanked the Member of Parliament for the gesture which he said would help students in the district improve their academic performance. We will make judicial use of these materials and I'm sure you that we will continue to be at the top of the BEC league table in the region. The District Health Director of Wa East, Dr. Mathias Stengan, said the donation, particularly the motorbikes, would enhance health care delivery. These things have helped, I mean, are going to help us. We need the infrastructure. The, I mean, the, the theater said we are going to use them in a makeshift, um, I mean, enclosure. We do not have the standard place to put them. But we think that when it becomes emergency, saving life is more important. The Wa East District Chief Executive Moses Joti also commended the MP for complementing effort of the Assembly in delivering on it mandate. Right, and we can also tell you that in Kulung, one of the communities that didn't have water, the borehole is now uh, pumping water to residents and they are very excited. N quickly before I go to the Tamale me metropolis, how do we sustain development in Wa East? Well, it should be a collaborated effort because no 
one person or one organ can do that. Because mm. like I, I earlier tried to explain to you, it's such an extensive and vast district. In fact, I have more than 150 communities, communities in, the, in, the, in the district. So if, if it isn't a multifaceted effort, then it cannot, uh, no one group, uh, the assembly by itself, can, uh, cannot do as much. So if, if the media doesn't bring some of these things out, out. it's difficult for both the assembly and pass the MP to, to yes. get to know them. And sometimes at the national level, when they are talking of development, they are talking of uh, areas that can generate income, uh, or, or that can uh, finance even the projects. But unfortunately, some of the, the rural communities need these facilities because they must live. And they must live with the, other, the rest of Ghana. Mm. But you, you get to some of the places, even how to cross to, to a market or somewhere, it becomes impossible, especially during the rainy season. So it must be a collaborated effort. And then uh, the, the, the press must continue to bring these lapses to the fore mm. so that people will see and then we must adjust and address them as we go along. Sincerely, in whatever one, one does, there's always some, uh, some gaps. Mm. And so th th these gaps have to be filled so that the country, Ghana, must move along. Mm. All right. So on your screen now, one of the communities in Wa is uh, Manwe, where uh, over 240 people uh, were in the same class. Uh, the assembly has renovated some two pavilions that were in ruins uh, and uh, perhaps uh, to help these kids some find some congenial environment to study. Those are the pictures you're seeing on your screens now. Now let's get to the Tamale Metropolis. So the excellence awards there and uh, uh, two aspects of it, those selected by the people and the assembly itself. So it's you started this project four months ago and yes. you've gone to this point. Sure. Now what will go into what these persons would receive and how is it intended to um, encourage others to also uh, take part in the development process? Well, like I said earlier, mm. um, it's an initiative intended to locate and appreciate people who uh, contributed and continue to contribute uh, in diverse ways uh, to the development of the uh, communities in our metropolis. And so, uh, what goes into it, yes, uh, each of the awardees will be given a plaque, and uh, some of them will have uh, some cash prizes attached to it. And so, uh, that's what we're going to have. Uh, it's a token, mm. uh, not much, because we do appreciate and reckon that uh, it is they themselves who, out of their own will, uh, who decided to contribute their quota to the development of the metropolis. Now, just take a listen to this. Uh, you have a situation where you have uh, a medical professional uh, <coughs> who the assembly didn't pay his or her fees. And yet he's working. And yet he, he got his training, uh, specialized in one of the most difficult aspects of medicine. I'm sure you know what I'm talking about. If you mention, say, pathology, for instance, it's a very difficult area in medicine and then you have neurosurgery. Mm. You know, these are very difficult areas of medicine. Then you have such a professional, after his training abroad, decides to pack bag and baggage to come back home, not to Accra, but to Tamale, against even the advice of some of his colleagues. Because naturally, we do know that a lot refuse postings today in uh, the northern parts of the country. Right. But this person decides to come. And he did not come empty-handed. He came home with medical supplies and assorted drugs, worth thousands of Ghana cities at his own expense, just to come and save lives. Isn't it worth appreciating such a person? And I can go on and on and on to give you uh, the others who have been played you know, And so I think that, uh, yes, assemblies have their key responsibilities or functions. Mm -hmm. But we cannot and we should not neglect this aspect of our development orientation because it is important that uh, once the assembly alone, like the honorable member said, mm. assemblies alone cannot you know, afford to shoulder all the uh, developmental challenges because they do not have the financial muscle to do that. And so if you have individuals and institutions complementing your efforts, mm. I think that it is not a misplaced priority. 
to do what we are about to do on 30th June uh, Saturday is going to be mm. at the Flash Modern City Hotel in Tamale. And the guest of honor I'm privileged to announce is the His Excellency, the Vice President of the, the Republic. Vice yes, he's going to be in attendance. Mm. And we're also going to have uh, lots of ministers of state and then all uh, metropolitan, municipal, and district executives in the northern region attending. Attending. And then all our former uh, chief executives. Uh, honorable okay. members of the assembly, uh, heads of security agencies, and, and all those who matter in our overall development process. We're going to bring all of them. We're going to bring all of them. The, uh, and so, uh, f your, your final words yeah. before I, I get honorable to wrap up. Uh, th this is expected to uh, add another notch to efforts at uh, opening up Tamale and Absolutely. getting the needed de sure. de development. For those who are watching you from there, what is your final message to them? We'll wrap up on this. Well, I think that I need to call on everybody in the metropolis. And you see, we said it from the beginning that this is not a Tamale alone project. The project has a national outlook. Even if you like, you can say international. And that's why we indicated from the beginning that it was not limited to only people who were domiciled in Tamale, in Tamale. or who hail from Tamale. Look, right, you can even live in space or underground. If you had contributed to So long as your work impacts positively on lives in Tamale, then you are eligible to be nominated for consideration. And so there you go. It has a national or international outlook. And so uh, I want to call on everybody to support this initiative. Uh, we have indicated that we will be very glad if it can even be sustained and perhaps replicated in other districts other across the country because it's a very good project that will help people to give up their best mm. in terms of development. I'm grateful. Honorable, wrap up for me on this. Uh, uh, your constituency and what the final, your final words would be. Uh, <coughs> thank you very much. Uh, why is open up the place and link up the people so that they are able to collaborate and to do things together? Then uh, we also do not have a district hospital, even as at now. It is only this year that the district assembly has decided to use its DDF funds mm. to start putting up a structure. So definitely I would like to use this opportunity to call on the Minister of Health that where any district is making an effort, they should also come in and push the district to its achieve a goal. So that, uh, and the people of Wa East must unite mm. and work together. We should bury our political, tribal differences and all that and collaborate and work together. It's togetherness that will bring us wherever we want to go. All right. I'm grateful. Honorable Godfrey Bayon is member of parliament for Wa East. Uh, Issa Salif Musa is a public relations officer of the uh, Tema Metrop Tamale Metropolitan Assembly. 30th June is the 